Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary channel and this short video we are going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night of the local time and first we are going to start with the Crimea area and the Zaporozhye region as well. The Ukrainians during at this morning launched massive missile attack against the logistic infrastructure of Crimea. The Russians are saying that there they were few strikes of storm shadows against the bridges that connect that connect uh, the Crimea and with the Zaporozhye area. Furthermore, the Russians published the video of, with the results of those attacks. As you can see, this bridge is pretty damaged. The Russians stopped the, any uh, like passage along these uh, bridges for repairing this. They are saying that they need a lot, up to a few days to repair these uh, the bridges. Anyway, we see that the Ukrainians uh, under realized the difficulties of the offensive operation in Zaporozhye and that they need more time to prepare themselves. And basically, they start repeating the situation with Antonov bridge that they were attacking uh, during the previous year when the Russians were in, in Kherson. So basically, they want to do the same. First, they want to destroy the bridges. And believe me, that was not the last attack from the Ukrainian side. They were attacked uh, until at least they will destroy these bridges or until the Russians are able to establish air defense and to shut down every single missile that leading and um, heading in this direction. Furthermore, the Russians reported that there were few explosions in the vicinity of Militopol. There were no explosions inside the town, like as a result of missile attacks. The Russians reported that that was the results of air defense work. So basically, uh, the Ukrainians, as I understand, were attacking the Russians' bridges in Crimea somewhere from the Zaporozhye area in this direction. Uh, let's uh, try to analyze and calculate the distance of that. So they were attacking to the south, probably somewhere from from Zaporozhye and the distance uh, is around uh, like uh, 200 kilometers and as I understand the Russians air defense start working in Militopol few of those rockets uh, the Russian missiles the Russians were able to shut down but as we understand some of them were able to reach the target and to damage the bridge that currently is closed and the Russians are trying to fix and the issue logistic issue trying to send cars from uh, and um, using another directions now we are moving further to uh, Petihat the Russians, as a result of counter-offensive operation, managed to push the Ukrainians to step back from the settlement and basically, and currently the Ukrainians control just the farmers on the north on the Ukrainian side of this river, of this Yancherkak river. The Russians are not, don't control the southern area, they control the hills in the vicinity and basically the settlement is located in the gray zone. Now we are moving to Vremivka tactical bridgehead. There were, um, the, there were few, up, we received some updates from this territory. The Ukrainians attacked are trying to attack the Russians all over the front lines and currently the Ukrainians started the mining process of the fields that located on the west from Starozhova and Makarovka. These fields and basically the Ukrainians are trying, they want to cut this uh, pie very slowly and the thing that they're going to do is to push the Russians below this yellow line because currently this area still remains under Russian control and after that they will probably attack further in the direction of Rovnopol. The Russians published a lot of new videos and video updates from the Vremivka tactical bridgehead. This video you see how uh, probably the tank T-64 was trying to evacuate Max Pro, but uh, basically as a, as a result of artillery attack, uh, as a result of uh, drone attack, there was some kind of accident and currently the Ukrainians lost two completely, we can say, not not damaged vehicles that probably the Russians are able to restore. Also, the Russians published another video how they were attacking another evacuation like forces. As you can see on this video, the Ukrainians were trying to evacuate tank using the forces of light vehicles or the tank was trying to evacuate. Very difficult to understand. But anyway, those forces were discarded and spotted by the Russians drone forces. And as a result of those attacks, the Ukrainians lost more armored vehicles on the territory of Rimevka tactical bridge hat. So as you can see the the light vehicle was trying to evacuate tank but uh, this vehicle was damaged by the Russian drone. The tank was damaged and probably as a result of fire the armored vehicle was damaged as well. 
Now we're moving further to Donetsk front line. There were very heavy clashes during the previous night, and the Russians reported that uh, currently this night they were made another attempt to storm Avdiivka itself, and they're saying that they managed to penetrate the Russia the Ukrainian's defense belt and to enter the first defense line on this on the southern area of Avdiivka. So somewhere in this direction. So maybe this is the beginning of the battle of Avdiivka, or maybe this is like another attempt, another uh, attempt from the Russian side to force the Ukrainians to send reserves to pin them down and not to allow them to be flexible and mobile on this part of the combat line. And now we are moving to the most important and the most interesting part of the special military current stage of special military operation. Now we're going to talk about Kupiansk and Leman front lines, where during the previous 24-48 hours uh, we saw the most fierce and bloody clashes from both sides. The Russians... <coughs> And the Ukrainians published another video showing the satellite picture of the settlement. These red dots shows the area of significant of fire of actions of battle actions. These red, red dots shows the area where uh, where the most fierce fighting and battles took place. And based on that video, we see that the, the Russians are advancing um, in this in direction from the Crimea in direction of let's say Serebrianka in this area, and the second satellite um, area on this picture we see on the east uh, right above this AK-47 icon the Russians are advancing to the south in this direction and the sources are saying that they managed to got significant results and there is a very fierce fightings and the Ukrainians are forced to step back the Russians are saying that mainly when they attack they they were able to capture a lot of soldiers a lot of prisoners of war and mostly those those soldiers were mobilized uh, for non, like uh, during within the previous three months so very inexperienced, for, inexperienced forces and they're saying that Ukrainians took a decision to keep uh, unexperienced forces on as uh, the first defense belt and the most experienced were moved further in direction of Liman and basically they control the Zhiribets river this area and probably the most experienced forces are located along this river and most unexperienced forces are located as the first defense belt that uh, creates no barrier for the Russian forces that push in direction of Liman now we are moving further to Kupian's front line. Today we got also a lot of very interesting updates. Uh, this morning finally we got some some map shows the results of uh, of some clashes in these territories you can see as a result of fierce fighting during the previous days the russians managed to capture completely the forest below liman Pierre. sinkovka this settlement still remains under ukraine control so basically as a result of fierce fighting during the previous days the russians managed to establish control over this part of the forest so as you can see this is a very powerful bridge had this a very powerful uh, advance from the russian side and basically the Russians got the outskirts of Petropavlovka. This is the first settlements of that, the first buildings of that settlements, and basically the settlements by Sinkovka appeared in operational encirclement. Of course, if the Russians need to complete advancing, they need to capture the settlement, and now they can do this because the supply roads that goes from uh, from Petropavlovka to Sinkovka from the south currently under Russian fire control. I'm talking about this line. Of course, the Ukrainians still have possibilities to send their forces along the main road but this is like road um, um, located un under the open space and the Russians do have possibilities to attack any reserves any reinforcement that goes along this road by drones and so on so basically we uh, we became witnesses of the beginning of the battle for Kupinsk the thing that I have the question that I have is that basically the Russians took a decision to to attack Kupinsk just on the Russian side of Oskol River. I expected that because of the fact that the Russians managed to develop their bridgehead in the south and in the north of Dvorichne, they will try to attack in these directions as well. But currently we don't see any movements from the Russian side on this direction. Maybe the Russians wait when the Ukrainians will move some reserves from Dvorichne to the south to slow down the Russians and after that the Russians will be... Will activated anyway this the situ entire situation is very interesting and one more time basically on as a result of this attack the russians will be able to achieve at least few things the first one is to uh, take control over just the russian side of kupinsk uh, according to uh, a school river 
Another thing that the Russians will be able to achieve is to restore control over the railroad that goes, this black line that goes from Russian territory to the Svatova and then from Svatova to Severodonetsk. This is a very important road. And from Severodonetsk, this road goes to Papasne and then even. Uh, so it's a very important region from economical perspective. Uh, this railroad will give the Russians a lot of advantage, a lot of benefits in the future. Uh, furthermore, this road, black road, goes to Liman and then this road goes to uh, Artyomovsk. So anyway, the Russians need to take control over this bridgehead and over this logistic hub uh, to increase their possibilities and logistic possibilities as well. So basically, we are going to see soon the battle for Sienkovka, battle for Petropavlovka and battle for uh, for Kupinsk itself. Furthermore, the, for the Ukrainian forces who are currently located in Kislovka, Katlarovka, Novoselovka uh, could appear in a small operational encirclement or at least could be cut from the mainland. So that's why probably the Ukrainians will be forced to move, to use some forces from this bridge, had to send them back to Kupinsk to slow down the Russians. And of course, this will move to um, to um, decrease of their might and power in the vicinity of Novoselovka, and the Russians could use this also this situation and to attack in direction of Sinkova, right in the middle line between these like um, two bridge hats. And that's it for today, for this short video. Military Summer channel reminds you to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel, put your likes, join my Patreon, and have a good day. Bye-bye.